Our scripture reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark. We pick up right where we left off last week in Jesus' early ministry. Jesus had begun to preach, to teach, and to heal, and we'll hear more of this today. And Jesus gets increasingly radical with love and forgiveness. Jesus had also begun to call disciples to follow him. We'll hear him extend the invitation to a man named Levi. At this point in Jesus' ministry, he was in the region of the Sea of Galilee. This included Capernaum, where he had a home as an adult. For our reading today, you'll want to know that the scribes were religious leaders who paid careful attention to the law and the scriptures. They meant well, and they sought to preserve their heritage and tradition. It also helps to know that tax collectors were not well-liked. They were viewed as corrupt traitors working for the Roman Empire. And when we hear about John, that's John the Baptist, the cousin of Jesus. John had followers and disciples too before Jesus did. Our readers can come forward and we'll hear the voices of the narrator, of Jesus, and the scribes. Listen to these holy words from the gospel according to Mark, the second chapter. When Jesus returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. So many gathered around there that there was no longer room for them, not even in the front door. And he was speaking the word to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they lay down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts. Why does this fellow speak in this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, stand up and take your mat and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went out again beside the sea. The whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. As he was walking along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat down at dinner in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the scribes of the Pharisees saw, what he was eat saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak, otherwise the patch pulls away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is our second week in our sermon series, Hashtag Follow Jesus. We're reading the stories of Jesus to better understand how to follow Jesus in our daily lives. On social media, we follow all sorts of people. People we know and people we don't know. As Christians, we are followers of Jesus. And we want to know what he said and what he did so that we might be influenced by him and follow in his footsteps. Remember, a hashtag with a pound sign, is a way to label and sort topics on social media. They can also be funny and insightful phrases. We could give our scripture reading from Mark chapter 2 a variety of hashtags, like hashtag look out below for the way the paralytic man was lowered down into a crowded room inside Jesus' house. Imagine seeing a person enter a room in that way. Or hashtag, who's coming to dinner? For the surprise dinner guests that Jesus had. He ate with sinners and tax collectors. And the proper people of society didn't expect that or think that that was appropriate. Or hashtag wedding crashers for Jesus' teaching about fasting and feasting. As long as Jesus was around, he was like the bridegroom of a wedding. And it was time to feast. Or, hashtag, out with the old, in with the new, for Jesus' analogy with cloth and wineskins. He seemed to be saying that God was doing something new through him, and that the people would do well not to cling on to old ways. Rather, he encouraged them to embrace the new. We're going to look closely at the stories with those first two hashtags to consider what Jesus did and how we can follow Jesus today. So first, hashtag look out below. This first story here tells of a paralyzed man and his four friends coming to Jesus. We don't know how the man became paralyzed, and we don't know how long he had been paralyzed. He might have been born that way. It might have happened recently in an accident, say at work. We don't know. Either way, it was a hardship for him, especially in that day and age, without rights for the disabled or modern technology. It was probably assumed that it was his fault for being paralyzed, whether it was or not. Back then, people often believed if bad things happened to you, that you deserved it. But we know better today, or we try to know better today, that sometimes bad things happen for no good reason and for no fault of our own. At any rate, this man wanted healing. He needed healing in one way or another. We also don't know, know why this man and his friends were so determined to get to Jesus. They must have heard about Jesus. He was starting to gain a reputation. What did they expect Jesus to do for them? When they showed up to Jesus' home, there were so many people, they couldn't even get in the door. But they didn't give up. They were going to bring their friend to Jesus. So they went to extreme measures, and they went on to the roof. Now, homes at that time and place often had a ladder or stairs to get up to the roof. So up they lugged their friend. The roof would have been made of sod or grass. They would have had to done some mild but repairable damage to dig a hole in the roof. And then the four of them lowered the man down in front of Jesus. Not an easy task. Hashtag all is forgiven. The first thing we know that Jesus said to the man was, Son, your sins are forgiven. We are not told of this man's sins. But again, society would have viewed him as a sinner, as someone who was cursed by God. We are left to believe that this man needed to hear those words. Perhaps he carried a tremendous sense of guilt and shame. Perhaps he needed most of all to hear that he was right with God. Don't we all? 
Jesus told him that he was forgiven and loved by God. It's interesting that neither the paralyzed man nor his friends asked for anything more. It was Jesus wanting to demonstrate his authority who suggested physical healing. Hashtag homeward bound. So Jesus said to the paralytic, stand up, take your mat, and go home. And just like that, the man was homeward bound on his own two feet. He was strong and able to walk. And the people had never seen anything like it. The paralyzed man was forgiven and healed because of their faith. The Bible says that Jesus saw their faith, the faith of the paralyzed man and his four friends. I don't know about you, but I need friends like that. I want friends like that. Don't we all? We need people who will carry us when we are weak. We need people who won't give up on us when we are broken and burdened. We need people who will say, I'll be there for you when the rain starts to fall. People who will be there for us when we're having a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, or even a bad year. Do you have people who have been there for you? Do you have people to bring you meals after you've spent days in the hospital? Do you have people to call in the middle of the night when you're broken down? Do you have people who will carry you to Jesus? People who will listen to you and cry with you and pray with you and pray for you? This is one of the purposes of the church, to be there for each other, to carry each other to Jesus. Godparents can do this for us. Parents, siblings, family, friends can do this for us. This church strives to do this for one another. We will be there for you. We will carry you to Jesus. Now the next story. Hashtag ring ring. Is Levi there? We don't know if Jesus had talked with Levi previously, but this occasion would be life changing. He invited Levi with the words, follow me. And for one reason or another, Levi followed Jesus. Now remember, Levi is a tax collector, which means he worked for the oppressive Roman Empire, and then he charged the people as much in taxes as he wanted to. Kept the rest for himself. The people would have viewed Levi as a traitor and a white-collar thief. Hashtag who is coming to dinner. So imagine the surprise when Jesus went to Levi's home to eat with him. Especially back then, to eat with someone was a sign of friendship and acceptance. It still is today to some degree. If we go downtown and see someone eating together at the cafe, we assume that they know each other, that they like each other. Jesus went to eat with sinners and tax collectors, which showed that he liked them, that he accepted them. It doesn't mean he approved of their sin, but it does indicate that he had affection for them, that he loved them. Hashtag dinner with the IRS. That's our official hashtag for the day. How would you feel about having dinner with the IRS? The IRS is our tax collecting service, of course, and they probably make us all a little nervous. Having dinner with the IRS might make us feel uncomfortable. After all, we don't want to be audited. But I certainly do not view people who work for the IRS as traitors or thieves. 
For Jesus to have dinner with tax collectors and notorious sinners would be more like Jesus having dinner with the Godfather. Not your Godfather, the Godfather. Or the Mafia. He'd be eating with unrepentant, thieving thugs. He'd be dining with people of poor judgment, bad morals, and no values. He'd be eating with people who were viewed to be as far away from God as possible. And Jesus told us that's exactly who he came for. The sick, the unrighteous, the sinners. Jesus came for sinners. We won't be interested in Jesus until we know that we are broken, sinful people. And when we know that we are broken, sinful people, we will eagerly want to eat with Jesus. We will want to feast at the Lord's table. No one is beyond the love and grace of God. You are not beyond the love and grace of God. Jesus wants you and me. Jesus invites you and me to eat with him and to follow him. Jesus invites you and me to know the love of God, to know the acceptance of God. We say this in our welcome statement. We welcome all regardless of race or culture, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, or relationship status. We welcome all without regard to addictions, physical or mental health, past misdeeds, socioeconomic circumstances, immigration status, or anything that too often divides us. We welcome and celebrate diversity and uniqueness. We welcome you. Who can you invite to know Jesus better. Who do you already know that needs the love and acceptance of God? Sinners and saints all are invited into the Lord's family and invited to feast at the Lord's table. Jesus believed so deeply in the radical forgiveness of sins, and so deeply in a radical inclusion of all people that he gave his life for it. He died on the cross so that he could forgive and include you and me and all people everywhere. Nothing can stop him now from forgiving sins and inviting us all to feast at the Lord's table. As followers of Jesus, we carry on this legacy. Like Jesus will be there for you, we are there for one another. We are the ones to say, I'll be there for you. Like Jesus invites you to the table, we invite the IRS and the mafia and everyone else. We invite every kind of sinner to feast at the Lord's table. In deep friendship. Let us hold on and care for one another and carry each other to Jesus. And in true openness, let us reach out our hands to invite the stranger and the sinner to Jesus. And in this way, we truly follow Jesus. Amen.